Hey guys, this is Eric Weingartner with Weingartner Racing. Today's video is a product review video and it's over these AFR LS Enforcer heads. If you're unfamiliar with my channel, primarily what I do is I do product review videos on cylinder heads and also do a lot of dyno testing. For those that don't know, my primarily, primary job is cylinder head porting. So this is not just some guy that's just showing you what he got in, like look at this, I unboxed it and stuff. No. I actually do this for a living, so I have somewhat more of a professional opinion. And I also have two flow benches so I can give you actual real flow numbers, not what's advertised. So I have had quite a bit of experience with AFR heads. And I'll tell you some of the differences between this head, say, and an enforcer head. Or, I'm sorry, the enforcer head versus their CNC line. And I'll also say, tell you probably the biggest thing that most people want to know is this worth buying versus redoing your, say, your set of your LS243 heads. Because really that's what it's going up against. So for those who are unfamiliar, AFR makes this LS or makes the Enforcer line of heads. And they're a much cheaper version than others. And I have reviewed many of the others. So I've reviewed the ones for the small block Chevy. That's a good head. Small block Ford. That's a good head. Big block Chevy. Uh, it probably should pass. Um, I just don't think it's that good of a head. There's other heads that are better. Um in about the same ballpark for price. So, but this one, this is, this LS one's first ones came through the shop. I'm gonna say it's worth the money. So if you're kind of contemplating redoing your 243s versus this, which I'm gonna tell you more in the video, absolutely I would say get this. Now you might be saying, well, you're saying that because AFR has probably helped you out. AFR didn't send me this head, by the way, to um, do a review on. Matter of fact, what happened is a customer came in to buy one and that's the only reason why it's been here. And that's why I haven't reviewed another one before now. So no one's paying me to say any of the stuff you're saying. It's strictly my opinion. And it comes from with no one trying to line my pockets as I'm doing this. So anyway, one of the questions that gets asked a lot is what's the difference between the AFR enforcer and say their CNC heads, whether it be small block Chevy, big block Chevy, um, even small block Ford. Really, what's the difference between the enforcer heads and the... There are better heads. Why are these cheaper and the other one's so much more expensive? So let me explain and please listen closely to it to me when I say this because every time I do one of these videos, some of you hear half of what I say and then you put something in the comments with, that's already been explained. So just listen closely to me. The AFR enforcer heads are cheaper because of the amount of time that AFR has to use on the heads. And here's what I mean. A lot of AFR heads are cast in China. Um, not not even just the enforcers, some of the others too. So if we do the small block Chevy, for instance, the small block Chevy, um, most of them are cast in China. Most of the LS heads are, are also cast in China. The small block Ford, most of those are cast in China. The only one that I could say at the last checking that hasn't wasn't cast in China was the big block Chevy lines, which, by the way, seems to be the one that has the most problems with their castings. So... What's the difference? Because you're already like, I can write people see him typing right now. No, they're made in America. Nope. Listen. On the AFR enforcer heads, what happens is these ones are not just cast in China. Every other piece of a machinery uh, hole that's done on this casting is done in China. Here's what I mean. So AFR, or sorry, the Chinese, China, in China, they'll be cast. They'll drill all these holes. They will, sorry, I'm trying not to cut my hand. They will install the guides. They will size the guides. They will do the valve job. They will drill all these holes. And then they ship them to AFR. When AFR gets them, they will put in quality valve train pieces and assemble them. So the only thing that AFR does on the enforcer heads is simply assemble them. Every other piece of machining that's done on this casting is done overseas. That's why this one's so much cheaper compared to the other one. So on their full CNC heads, I said they're cast in China. Now listen here. They're cast in China. So when AFR gets the heads, it's a, simply a blob. It's been poured into a mold. It has no holes. It has no guide holds. It has no seats installed. It has no guides installed. It's simply just a blob of aluminum that's roughly in the shape of what they want it to be. At that point, when AFR gets it, they start the machining process. They'll put all their bolt holes in. They'll machine the water passages. They'll put the spark plug threads in. Um, 
They'll put the guides in, they'll put the seats in, they'll put, do the valve job, they'll do the CNC porting, and then they'll assemble them. So the only thing on the other heads that are more expensive that, that China does is simply cast them. After that, AFR does everything else. So all the machining, all the rest is done at AFR. That takes much more time, hence the reason why the CNC heads and those other lines of heads cost much more than the enforcers. Because the enforcers, all they're really doing is assembly. So there you go. Now, this might be also different. You're like, well, where does this design come from? Well, I can't answer that exactly, but I can give you a uh, pretty good estimation. A lot of these AFR enforcer heads, even this one, look a lot like a dart head. So, and I'm not saying AFR bought a head from Dart and then sent it overseas to has cast. No, 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 no. Long before AFR was even selling these enforcer heads, other Chinese companies or other American companies were sell selling these Chinese castings. So, I don't know who did it, but I know it wasn't AFR because it was around way before they started doing it. But anyway, someone evidently had taken in Dart heads, several of them. They, I know the small block Chevy looks a lot like it. This one looks really similar, so does the small block Ford. The only one that really doesn't is the big block Chevy, and that's probably why it sucks. But they someone sent it over to uh, China, and then China cast it, and been selling for years, and AFR picked it up. Now, before you're like, oh, that's crappy for Dart. You want to hear some irony? Here's the irony. Dart currently sells in their SHP line, which is also now cast in China, the copy of the AFR head. So it looks like this head, except for it's an AFR copy. So, I know it's weird. AFR selling the knockoff of Dart, and Dart selling the knockoff of AFR. So, it is what it is. You would think that uh, AFR would sell the knockoff of uh, AFR, but it just doesn't work that way. But anyway, to the head. These heads have a two-inch intake valve. They're made for a small bore, because when you hear the valve sizes, you'll understand better. Uh, two-inch intake valve and a 1570 exhaust valve. Uh, it's made more for like the 5348 stuff. It can obviously work on a bigger board. And I actually float it on the 430 board. And I know you're like, well, that's much bigger. That's more closer to a uh, six liter board. True, but that's the smallest board that I have to flow on. So, but it does relatively well. Um, the, the, like I said, the ports, and I'll try to show you other views. They look a lot like a dart. And you can tell there's a lot of material around the guide there. See right there where the light is. If you were to um, grind that out, you're probably getting some more flow. Probably the biggest thing you could do if you really wanted to gain flow is take it to machine shop and have them redo the valve job. Because remember, these enforcers, AFR didn't do that valve job. Um, it was done over in China. And they're just using basic cuts as far as valve angles. So you can improve it. I know I could. If I had to put it up on my machine and put one of my custom cutter valve jobs on it, I'd gain flow right away and just blend it in. Boom. Probably have about 10, maybe 15 CFM. Same with a different radius on the exhaust valve job. Yeah, definitely gain. So, and also just minor working, you can gain. The chamber is so much better because it looks a lot like a dart. The chamber is so much better than a stock one. For instance, these are 243 chambers. Yeah. Much better. Much, much better. So, uh, that's definite improvement. Uh, this is the intake ports, which you've seen already, but... They're a cathedral design, so you can work with whatever you already have. Let me show you the exhaust real quick, and don't worry, I'm going to show you the flow numbers. Uh, sorry, one-handed. There we go. Here are the exhaust ports. Compared to those of the stock ones, definite improvement, especially if you run a turbo. Uh, yeah, that, that's a win. I will warn you one thing, though. And this is universal to almost every aftermarket head. On a factory head, which I don't know how good the light's going to capture that. I'm going to shine. Nope, it's because it's all dirty. See that lump right there? I'm trying to shine the light at the right spot. That's where this bolt hole is right here. On a factory casting, they put that bump there so that it doesn't drill all the way down into the port. On all aftermarket ones, this one's exposed, which means it goes right into the intake port. I only point this out because whenever you put on your rocker stand or bar, uh, put thread sealer on this one, on each one of the intake ones, it just to seal it up. Does it do anything wrong? Does it cause any other problems? No, just be aware. Small block Chevy has been that way for years, by the way. Anyway, that's it. The head looks really, really good. Uh, at the time of filming this, these heads run like 1320. 
So pretty cheap. So one of the questions you might be asked was, is this cheaper to do? I'm getting ready to show you the flow numbers. Don't worry about that, by the way. Is this head cheaper to do than, say, redo this deal? Is it? Is this, I mean, is this more economical than this? And absolutely not really. This is much cheaper kind of a way to do. So for instance, almost every 243 or any LS head that comes in to use, they've got this problem. You see this? The exhaust bolt's broken the head. So what I have to do is I have to get those out. And yeah, you can watch um, TikTok videos and you can get those out yourself. But if I'm doing it, time's money. That's $35 a pop. There's at least two in this head. I think there's at least two in the other one the same way. Every head has to be clean and blasted. So like right now, this is after three washings in my parts washer. I still have to put it in a blast cabinet and then get out and wash again. So you can be out of time for that. Still gonna mean to be surfaced and valve jobbed. So I'm gonna say, just, just give you an idea, I'm gonna run down some part, prices real quick. 300 for the valve job, 200 for the milling, you're out five. You now have another, probably another 100 in cleaning. So now you're at six. You're probably having another 100 in bolt removal. So now you're at seven. That's the head still bare. You're then gonna have to get the valve train kit from BTR. That's where I get mine and get it from other places. And that kit's about, I think like if you get titanium retainers, or you can say steel ones, like three, 330. So now you're at 930-ish. And then I'm gonna charge you for assembly. That's under 50, so you're at 980. And don't forget, we're still using stock valves at that point. Let's hope I don't have to change any. So you're at 980, and we don't even have the cost of the head in here yet. So unless you already own that head, let's say you went to Facebook Marketplace, you picked them up for $300, which would be a steal. You're now at mm, 1280, 1320. And these, I promise you, out of the box, I'm gonna show you the flow number in a minute. They outflow these. These only flow like 250s. This is higher and you're getting ready to see the flow numbers. But what I'm trying to say is it's not economical to buy this head, redo this head versus buying this one. And no, AFR is not paying me to say this. The only reason why these heads are even here is because the customer bought these from me. That's why I haven't been able to show any flow numbers from ones before because none have just come through the shop. But it, it makes no economical sense unless you already own them and they don't have like bolt hole problems and you already own the valve train kit to not use these. And before you're like, well, I don't want to use Chinese. I think these are cast in Mexico. So pick your poison. Um, you know what I'm saying? For sure, these valves that come from AFR are better than the stock valves, period. Um, this is a nice two-inch valve. It's got a big back cut. It's a quality valve. I mean, these are good. Very good, very good stuff. This is a much better valve than factory. If you ever get a factory valve, pull out one of the intake valves. This is what we call the margin. See that little flat spot right here? Not where the seat's hidden, it's right here. Look how thick that is. That gives more strength to the valve. Now pull out a stock one. It's almost like a razor blade. Ain't nothing there, hardly. This is the exhaust valve, a nice tulip design. Much better material and stuff than to come in stock. The valve springs that come with it are from Pack. It's pretty good. So, yeah, much better deal. But anyway, the thing you're really looking for is the flow number, so let me go ahead and show you that. Here are the flow numbers from this AFR LS Enforcer head. This is flowed on my Signs Digital 680 bench. It would flow a little bit more in the Superflow 750. I'm just not doing that. It takes too long. Um, and 4030 bore, no exhaust pipe. Here's the numbers. So this is, like I said, no exhaust pipe. Flows pretty good. 272 at 5. It actually creeps up a little bit. So when I'm opening the valve to approach 600, about 520, 530, it got up to about 280. Then it backed right up to 260s, 263, which you get at 7. And it kind of backs up from there. And then starts creeping back up. Uh, exhaust is real good though. Anyway, that's the flow numbers for it.